Chapter 24 Pramaya Nam Aparad Brajanath and Vijay Kumar were extremely happy to learn the glories of Sri Nam and Nam Swarup Tattva. When they arrived home, they chanted fifty thousand names on their Tulsi Mala without offense, and by this chanting of Shuddha Nam, they received direct experience of Krishna's mercy. It was late at night when they finally took rest. When they rose the next morning, they discussed the events of the previous night and became very blissful as they expressed their own realizations. They passed the day in bathing in the Ganga, worshipping Krishna, taking Hari Nam, performing Kirtan, studying Dasmula, reviewing Srimad Bhagavatam, and performing Vaishnav Seva and Bhagavat Prasad Seva. That evening, they presented themselves at the Venerable Babaji Mahashai's Kutia at Srivasanga. After offering Sastang Pranam, Vijay Kumar inquired about the topic of Nam Aparad Tattva that had been introduced the previous evening. On hearing Vijay Kumar's eagerness to know about this tattva, Babaji Maharaj was pleased and lovingly said, Just as Nam is the highest truth, so Nam Aparad, offense against Sri Nam, is the most frightening of all kinds of sins and offenses. All other kinds of sins and offenses go away naturally and automatically as one utters Sri Nam. But Nam Aparad does not go away so easily. In the description of the glories of Sri Nam in the Padma Purana, Svaga Kund 48.49, it is said, Nam Aparada Yuktanam Namanyeva Harantyagam Avishranta Prayuktani Tanye Varta Karani Cha For those infected with Nam Aparad, Sri Nam will certainly remove the sin, provided the sadaks chant tirelessly and unremittingly. Sri Nam himself will effect their deliverance. Just see, it is so difficult to destroy Nam Aparad. Therefore, one must avoid Nam Aparad when one chants Sri Nam. If one tries hard to stop committing Nam Aparad, Shuddha Nam will manifest very quickly. One may take Sri Nam and be chanting continually, with the hairs on his body standing on end and streams of tears flowing from his eyes. But it may still be that because of Nam Aparad, he is not uttering Shuddha Nam. Therefore, sadaks must give very special attention to this. Otherwise, they will not be able to chant Shuddha Nam. Vijay Prabhu, what is Shuddha Nam, the pure holy name? Babaji Shuddha Nam is Hari Nam that is free from the ten kinds of offenses. There is no consideration of purity or impurity with regard to the pronunciation of the syllables of Sri Nam. Namai kam yasyavachi smarana pata gatam shrotra mulang gatang va shudang va shuda varna vyahita rahitam tarayat yeva satyam tach ched deha dravina janata Loba Pashana Madye Nikship Tam Syan Afala Janakam Shigram Evatra Vipra Padma Purana Swaga Kund forty eight sixty to sixty one O best of Brahmanas, if only one holy name appears on the tongue, or enters the ear, or arises on the path of one's remembrance, that Nam will certainly liberate one. The purity or impurity of one's pronunciation of the syllables of Sri Nam, Nam Aksara, in accordance with Vidhi, regulations of Shastra, is not so important. That is to say, Sri Nam does not make such considerations. What is considered is that the real fruit of chanting will not come quickly if this all-powerful name is chanted in the interests of the body, house, wealth, material development, sons and family, or with greed for gold, women and prestige. There are two kinds of obstacles or offenses, ordinary and great. 
Shri Nam that is chanted with ordinary obstacles is Nam Abbas, which awards its benefits some time later. Nam impeded with great obstacles is Nam Aparad. This Nam Aparad does not go far away unless one chants Shri Nam constantly. Vijay, it seems to me that the Sadak should know about Nam Aparad. Please be merciful and tell us in detail about it. Babaji, there is a very deep and essential analysis of the ten kinds of Nam Aparad in the Padma Purana. Satang ninda nam na param, aparadang vitanute, yatakya tim yatam katam, usahate tutadvigaraham. 1. Criticizing or blaspheming saints and great bhaktas increases terrible offenses towards Sri Nam. How can Sri Krishna tolerate blasphemy of great souls who are devoted to Sri Nam and who preach the glories of Sri Krishna Nam in this world? Therefore, the first offense is to blaspheme the bhaktas. Shivas ya Sri Vishnu ya iha guna nama di sakalam diya binang pasyet sakalu harinama hita kara. 2. In this material world, Sri Vishnu's name, form, qualities, pastimes, and so on are all auspicious for all beings. If one considers them to be material phenomena and different from Sri Vishnu himself, this is detrimental to one's chanting of Sri Hari Nam. It is also Nam Aparad to believe that Shiva and other devas are independent and equal with Sri Vishnu. The other offenses are 3. Gurur Avagya to disrespect Sri Guru who knows Nam Tattva by considering him an ordinary mortal human being with a body made of the five material elements. 4. Shruti Shastra Nindanam To blaspheme the Vedas, the Sattvatas, the Puranas and other Shastras. 5. Artavad To think that the glorification of Sri Hari Nam in Shastra is an exaggeration. 6. Hari Nam Ni Kalpanam To interpret Sri Hari Nam in a mundane way or to think that Nam himself is a product of the imagination. Nam no balad yasya hi papa budia. Na vidyate tasya yame hi shudahi. 7. It is certain that one who is engaged in sinful activities on the strength of Sri Nam cannot be purified by artificial yoga practices such as yama, niyama, dhyana, and dharana. Dharma Vrata Tyaga Hutadi Sarva Shuba Kriya Samyam Api Pramadaha 8. It is an offense to think that rituals and pious material activities such as Dharma, Vrata, Tyag, and Homa are equal or even comparable to Bhagavan Sri Divya Nam, transcendental name. Ashradadane Vimukhe Pyashrinvati Yashchopadesha Shiva Nama Aparada. 9. It is Nam Aparad to give instructions on auspicious Sri Nam to those who are faithless or averse to hearing Sri Nam. Shrute Pi Nama Mahatme Ya Priti Rahito Nara Aham Mamadi Paramo Namni So Pyaparada Krit. 10. One is a Nam Aparadi if, even after hearing the wonderful glories of Sri Nam, he does not show love or enthusiasm for chanting Sri Nam and clings fast to the material conception of I and mine. That is to say, I am this body, composed of blood, flesh and skin, and things relating to this body are mine. Vijay, please make us understand all these offenses by explaining each shloka completely. Babaji. The first shloka describes two offenses. It is a great offense to blaspheme, censure, or disrespect bhaktas who have completely given up materially motivated practices such as karma, dharma, gyan, yoga, and tapasya, and who with an exclusive mood of devotion have taken shelter of Bhagavan's Sri Nam. 
Sri Hari Nam Prabhu cannot tolerate blasphemy of those who preach the factual glories of Sri Nam in this world. One should not blaspheme those bhaktas who are one pointedly devoted to Sri Nam. Instead, one should accept them as the best of saintly persons. One should remain and perform Nam Kirtan in their association. One will certainly attain the mercy of Sri Nam quickly by doing so. Vijay. Now we can understand the first offense clearly. Kindly explain the second offense. Babaji. The second offense is mentioned in the second part of the first shloka, and it has been explained in two ways. The first explanation is that it is an offense to Sri Nam to consider that Sadashiva and other leaders of the Devas are independent of Sri Vishnu. According to Bahu Ishwaravad, the doctrine of many controllers, Sadashiva is a perfectly powerful controller who is independent and separate from Bhagavan Sri Vishnu. However, this conception creates an obstacle to one pointed Hari Bhakti. Sri Krishna is actually the controller of everything and everyone, and Shiva and the other Devas only achieve their positions as controllers through his power. These Devas have no separate power of their own, and it is Nam Aparad to perform Hari Nam thinking that they do. The second explanation is that it is also an offence to Sri Nam to consider that the all-auspicious intrinsic Swarup of Sri Bhagavan's names, forms, qualities and pastimes is different from Bhagavan's eternal perfect form, Vigraha. Krishna's intrinsic nature, Krishna's name, Krishna's qualities and Krishna's pastimes are all transcendental and non-different from each other. One should perform Krishna Nam Sankirtan with this knowledge and realization, otherwise there will be an aparad, offense made to Sri Nam. Thus one should perform Krishna Nam after first comprehending Sambandha Gyan. This is the process. Vijay, I can understand the first and second Nam aparads very well, because you have kindly explained to me the relation of simultaneous oneness and difference between Sri Krishna's transcendental spiritual form and Sri Krishna himself, who possesses the form, between his transcendental qualities and he who possesses those qualities, between his names and he who possesses those names, and between the parts and the whole. One who is taking shelter of Sri Nam must also learn from Gurudev about the respective natures of the chit, conscious, and achit unconscious tattvas, and about the relationship between them. Now kindly explain the third offense. Babaji, the Sri Nam Guru is he who awards instructions about the superiority of Nam Tattva, and one's duty is to maintain fixed and resolute bhakti towards him. It is Nam Aparad to minimize the position of Nam Guru thinking that he knows only about Nam Shastra, whereas the scholars of Vedanta philosophy and other Shastras actually know the meaning of the Shastras. Actually no guru is superior to Nam Tattva Vid Guru, and it is an offense to think that he is less important. Vijay Prabhu, I am assured of well-being if I can maintain pure bhakti towards you. Please explain the fourth offense. Babaji, there is a special instruction in the Shruti regarding the ultimate goal. There, the glories of Sri Nam are declared to be the foremost of spiritual processes. O Masya Ajananto, Namachid Viviktanas, Mahaste Vishno, Sumating Bajanmahe, Om Tatsat. O Sri Vishnu, one who chants Sri Nam thoughtfully and properly will not be confused and disturbed in his bhajan and other regulative practices. In other words, when one accepts Sri Nam, there is no question of the place, time and person being favorable or unfavorable, because Sri Nam is the all-illuminating personified form of knowledge and the supreme knowable object. Therefore we offer our prayers to Sri Nam. Ong Padang Devasya Namasa Vyantaha 
Shravasya Vashrava Anamriktam Namani Chid Dadire Yagiyani Badrayante Ranayantaha Sandristau O most worshipable Lord, I am offering obeisances to your lotus feet again and again. Hearing the glories of your lotus feet may give bhaktas the adhika for fame and liberation. But what is the value in that? Still more glorious are those bhaktas who engage in discussions and debates to establish your lotus feet as the ultimate abode and together cultivate their service relationship with you through the performance of Sankirtan. When Ashakti appears in their hearts, they take sole shelter of your Chaitanya Swarup Nam, fully conscious name, to achieve darshan of your lotus feet. Om Tam U Stotaraha Purvam Yata Vida Ritasya Garva Bam Janusha Pipartana Asya Jananto Nama Chid Viviktan Mahaste Vishno Sumatim Bajamahe Hari Bhakti Vilas 11 274 to 276 Rig Veda 1 156 3 The letter U indicates utter astonishment that we cannot make our lives successful by performing kirtan of Sri Krishna as you do, glorifying that supremely renowned primeval and complete tat and sat reality, Padarta. The reason is that we do not know how his stava, prayers, and kirtan should be performed. Therefore our eternal duty is to fulfill the purpose of our human life by engaging in incessant Harinam kirtan. All the Vedas and Upanishads proclaim the glories of Sri Nam, and it is Nam Aparad to blaspheme the mantras that reveal the glories of Sri Nam. Some people unfortunately neglect the Shruti mantras that give these instructions, and give more respect to the other instructions of the Shruti. This is also Nam Aparad, and the result will be that the offender will not have any taste for Nam. You should perform Hari Nam with the understanding that these main Shruti mantras are the life and soul of the Shruti. Vijay, Prabhu, it seems as if nectar is pouring from your mouth. Now I am very eager to understand the fifth offense. Babaji, the fifth offense is to give mundane interpretations of Sri Nam. The Jaimini Samhita explains this offense as follows. Shruti Shmiti Purane Shu Nama Mahatmya Vachisu Yertavada Iti Bruryur Na Te Sham Nirayak Shayaha Those who consider that the mantras of the Vedas, Puranas, Upanishads and other Vedic literatures have exaggerated the glories of Bhagavan's Nam will go to everlasting hell and never return. In the Brahma Samhita, Sri Bhagavan has said to Sri Brahma, Yan nama kirtana falam vividam nishamya na shradudati manute yadutar vadartam yo manushastam ihaduka chayek shipami samsara gora vididarti nipiditangam If a human being does not become faithful when he hears the glories of Harinam, but believes them to be exaggeration, I put him into the terrible cycle of birth and death with all kinds of miseries. In the Shastras it is said that Bhagavan's names contain all his shaktis. Sri Nam is completely spiritual, and therefore he is successful in destroying the illusion of this material world. Krishneti Mangalam Nama Yasyavachi Pravartate Bhashmi Bhavanti Rajendra Mahapataka Kotaya Vishnu Dharma Purana O King, millions of sins are burned to ashes if the supremely auspicious form of Krishna's Nam resides in one's mouth. Nanyat Pashyami Jantu Nan Vihaya Harikirtanam Sarva Papa Prashamanam Prayas Chittam Dvijotama Brihan Naradiya Purana O best among the Brahmanas, Sri Hari Nam is the atonement that destroys all forms of sins, and I consider that one who gives up Sri Nam 
to be no more than an animal. Nam no hi yabati shakti, papa ni harane hare, tavat kartum na shakno ti, pata kam pata ki naraha. Brihat Vishnu Purana. The potency of Sri Hari Nam can remove more sins than the most sinful person can possibly commit. All these glories of Sri Nam are the supreme absolute truth, but when people active in karma and gyan hear them, they concoct explanations to protect their own activities. Their explanations is that the glories of Sri Nam mentioned in Shastras are not really the truth, but are exaggerations intended to create a taste for Sri Nam. Namaparad will prevent such offenders from getting a taste for Sri Nam. You should perform Hari Nam with full faith in the statements of the Shastras and never take the association of those who give mundane explanations. Furthermore, if they unexpectedly appear before your eyes, you should take bath with all your clothes on. That is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instruction. Vijay, Prabhu, it appears difficult for householders to chant Shuddha Hari Nam, because we are always surrounded by offensive people who are not at all devotional. It is very difficult for Brahmana pundits like ourselves to have such Sangha. Prabhu, please give us the strength to give up bad association. The more I hear from your mouth, the more my thirst for hearing increases. Now please explain the sixth offense to us. Babaji, the sixth offense is to consider Sri Bhagavan Nam to be imaginary. Mayavadis and fruitive materialists think the changeless Nirishesh Brahm to be the absolute truth. Those who believe that the Rishis have imagined Sri Bhagavan Nam, such as Rama and Krishna, as a method to attain perfection are Nam Aparadis. Hari Nam is not imaginary. He is an eternal spiritual Vastu. Sri Sadguru and the Vedic Shastras instruct us that when we engage in the process of bhakti, Hari Nam manifests within our spiritual senses. Therefore, Hari Nam must be accepted as the absolute truth, and if one thinks that he is imaginary, one can never attain his mercy. Vijay Prabhu, before we took shelter of your fearless lotus feet due to bad association, we also thought in that way. Now by your mercy, this conception is vanquished. Please explain the seventh offense to us. Babaji, one who is engaged in sinful activities on the strength of Sri Nam is a Nam Aparadi. If one performs sinful activities in the belief that Sri Nam will purify him, one cannot become free from those mountains of sins by following the rules and regulations of Vaishnava conduct, because all these activities then assume the form of further sins that are in the category of Nam Aparad, and only the process for nullifying Nam Aparads can destroy them. Vijay Prabhu, if Hari Nam can destroy all sins without exception, then why does it not destroy the sins of one who chants Sri Nam? And why is he deemed an offender? Babaji On the day that the jiva accepts Shuddha Nam, one name that he utters certainly destroys the sum total of all his Prarabdha and his Aparabdha karma. And through the second name, Prem will arise. Those who chant Shuddha Hari Nam have no desire to perform even pious activities. And what to speak of their maintaining Papa Buddhi? a mentality that I shall commit sin and then chant Nam to exonerate myself from that sin. A person who has taken shelter of Sri Nam will never commit a sin. However, it may be that a sadak only utters Nama Bas and not Shuddha Nam because of some remaining Nam Aparad. The sins that he performed before chanting Nama Bas are being destroyed and there is no taste for committing new sins. Namabas also very slowly destroys whatever sinful karma remains because of previous practice. Sometimes he unexpectedly commits new sins, but they also go away because of his Namabas. However, it is Nam Aparad to take shelter of Sri Nam and then engage in sinful activities, thinking, 
Since the influence of Sri Nam destroys my sins, certainly it will also destroy the sins that I am committing now. Vijay, now kindly tell us about the eighth offense. Babaji, Sat Karma refers to all kinds of Dharma in the general sense, that is to say, Vanashram, performing charity and other pious activities, observing vows, brata, and other kinds of auspicious activities, renouncing the results of all activities, sannyas dharma, all kinds of yagyas, astanga yoga, and whatever else Shastra has defined as auspicious activity. These are all counted as material dharma, jad dharma, whereas Bhagavan Sri Nam is transcendental to material nature. All these sat karma are only auxiliary means to attain the transcendental, blissful goal. They are not the goal themselves. However, Harinam is the means at the time of sadhan, and is himself sadhya, the goal at the time of achieving the result. Therefore, sat karma cannot possibly be compared with Harinam, and those who consider that sat karma is equal to Harinam are nam aparadis. One who prays to Sri Harinam for the insignificant results of performing Sat Karma is a Nam Aparadi, because his activity exposes his conception that the various forms of Sat Karma are equal to Sri Nam. You should take refuge of Harinam with spiritual intelligence, knowing that the result of Sat Karma is very insignificant. This is the understanding of the process of Sadhan. Abhideya Gyan. Vijay. Prabhu, we have understood very clearly that there is nothing equal to Hari Nam. Now mercifully enlighten us about the ninth offense. Babaji. Of all the various instructions in the Vedas, the instructions on Hari Nam are the most important, and only those who have faith in exclusive bhakti are qualified to hear Sri Nam's glories. It is an offence to give instruction on Harinam to those who do not have faith, who are averse to the transcendental service of Hari, or who have no taste for hearing Nam. It is beneficial to give instruction that Harinam is the most exalted of all spiritual practices, and that all who accept Harinam will become most fortunate. But one should not give such instructions on Harinam to the unqualified. When you become a Parama Bhagavat, then you will also be able to transmit Shakti. Such a great Vaishnava can first create faith in Sri Nam by bestowing spiritual Shakti on the Jivas, and after that instruct them about Sri Nam. However, as long as you remain a Madhyam Vaishnava, you must neglect those who are faithless, disinterested, and envious. Vijay, Prabhu, how should we understand the behavior? of those who give Harinam to unqualified people out of greed for wealth, name and fame. Babaji, they are Nam Aparadi. Vijay, please explain the tenth offense. Babaji, people in the material world think, I am such and such a person. This wealth, sons and relatives are all mine. They are madly engrossed in such material consciousness. If by coincidence they hear the glories of Hari Nam from learned people, a moment of renunciation or knowledge may appear. But then, if they knowingly do not keep their attachment for Sri Nam, they are also Nam Aparadis. Therefore, it is said in the second shloka of Shikshastaka Nam Nam Akari Bahuda Nijasharva Shaktis, Tatra Pita Niyamita Smarane Nakala. E ta drishi tava kripa bhagavan mamapi durdaivam idrisham ihajani na nuragaha. O Bhagavan, you have manifested yourself in various names, such as Krishna, Govinda, Gopal, Vanamali, and so on. You have invested all your shaktis in these names, and there is no question of improper time or place for remembering Sri Nam. You are so causelessly merciful. But unfortunately, because of my apparats, I have no taste for Sri Hari Nam, whom you have made so easily available. One should remain free from the ten kinds of Nama Aparad, 
and engaged in Hari Nam. If one does so, Sri Nam will swiftly award you his mercy in the form of Prem and transform you into a Parama Bhagavat. Vijay Prabhu, I can now understand that Mayavadis, Kamis and Yogis are all offenders to Sri Nam. Since this is the case, is it proper for pure Vaishnavas to participate when many people congregate to perform Nam Kirtan? Babaji It is not proper for Vaishnavas to participate in Sankirtan groups in which Nam Aparadis are prominent and the lead singer is a Nam Aparadi. However, there is no fault in participating in Sankirtan groups in which pure Vaishnavas or general bhaktas who are Nama Basis are prominent. On the contrary, in such Sangha there will be gain in the form of Ananda in Nam Sankirtan. Now it is late. Tomorrow I will speak to you on Nam Abbas. Vijay and Brajanath became ecstatic with Nam Prem. After offering prayers to Babaji Maharaj, they took his precious foot dust on their foreheads and returned home, singing Kirtan, Hari Haraya Nama Krishna Yadhavaya Namaha. Thus ends the twenty-fourth chapter of Jaivadharma, entitled Prameya, Nam Aparad.